Hey, it's Ben Hassel here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at Cineflare screens available from FX Factory. Now, in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at a couple of things you need to do in your edits before you actually apply the Cineflare screens effect um, to your clips on the timeline. We're gonna talk about how you can edit your clips in a couple of different ways um, with Cineflare screens, um, and also a couple of different things to consider as you're editing your clips. Um, this tutorial review is sponsored by FX Factory, um, so do go and check them out. Um, and if you like these kinds of tutorial reviews or pure Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button to find out when I'm posting new videos. Um, but without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at Cineflare screens from FX Factory. So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're gonna be having a look at the screens plugin, looking at how we can work with it um, and talking about some of the things we'll need to do before we actually begin to set things up in Final Cut Pro 10. So one of the first things uh, we're gonna to need to do is have our footage prepared um, that we're gonna use. Um, so we're gonna dive in and look at how we create a screen recording. So if you've got a video created already, then you can use that. Um, but for this uh, first example, we're actually gonna have a look at how we do this with a screen recording on Mac OS X. So I'm gonna to jump to a website here. Um, so we're gonna use this Crazy Catch uh, website. And basically, um, if we hold down Shift, Command, and Tap 5, it's gonna bring up this little screen recording panel that we can see down the bottom. Um, and you've got some nice options here. So I can take a screen capture, these three buttons across on the left, or I can record all or part of my screen um, with these two buttons um, here. So I'm gonna record all of my screen and here under my options, um, you can see basically where it's gonna save that recording to, um, whether it's gonna have a delay before I start recording, and then also whether I'm gonna be recording any sound as I create this recording. I'm not gonna record any sound or anything like that. So we're just gonna jump in straight away and hit the record button, and we'll get this little count in, five, four, three, two, one. And now this uh, website is being recorded, and. I like to record these websites and use the Screens plugin because it kind of sets your prototyping or what you're showcasing into a context. So if we jump into products here, we might look at the Wild Child 2.0. And then once we get into this part of the website, we can show the interactivity on the website. And then also by placing it within the screen, we can bring that screen recording to life in a kind of 3D space. Um, so there's a little bit more dynamism in your screen recording. So I'm gonna to come up to the top here and just press stop. And that's gonna stop my screen recording and you can see if I click here, I can now uh, preview it. So basically, I can see that preview um, of the recording I made, um, see all the screens that I went to and what I looked at, and that will be perfect to drop into Final Cut Pro 10. So I'll just click done here. So once we have our screen recording made, um, we can basically drop that into Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm gonna come back into Final Cut Pro 10. We'll bring up the Finder as well. So I'm just using Command and Tab to move between my different applications. And basically you can see my screen recording because I had it set to record to the desktop, um, has dropped onto the desktop here, and I can drag this across to my footage in Final Cut Pro 10. So basically there's kind of two steps um, to making our screens set up here. So what you can see here is that I've got a compound clip here and we can see that by this icon. And the reason for that is that in this compound clip, I have basically, if I double click on it, um, pull together a whole bunch of different clips in order to be able to add that screens effect to this particular clip. So screens is an effect rather than a generator. So basically we're applying it to clips on our timeline. So I'm gonna come back here by clicking the back button out of the compound clip. We can see we're in a compound clip by these little uh, stripes across on the right hand side here and on the left. So we'll come back and now we'll clear our timeline. So I'm basically gonna select this particular compound clip and delete it. And we're gonna make a new one. So I am gonna grab a few different bits of footage here I have a previous screen recording that I made. And basically what I wanna do before I actually apply the screens effect is I wanna cut down my footage um, as much as possible. So I'm gonna, once I've got my clip on the timeline, just do Shift and Z so I can see the entire timeline. And I'm gonna trim this down. I'm gonna trim this down to the crazy catch image here. So this is basically my favorite sports toys uh, that I like to use. And then I've trimmed that down from the beginning just using the select tool. We'll let that run through for a few seconds. 
and I'm going to come up here and grab the range selection tool and I'm going to select an area in the middle here I want to come through to this surfing shape bit of the footage and we'll trim this down as well so you can see basically these are screen recordings of different websites shift and z again just to kind of zoom to fit so i've got about 20 seconds of footage here the first clip is six seconds and my second clip is a little bit longer so i'm going to trim that down and we'll trim it down from the end as well and we'll grab one of the clip in here i'm going to use this short piece of footage of these mounties on parade and there's a short section here where they fire the cannon so i'm going to grab that and drop it down to the timeline i'm going to take all the sound right down so i'm just going to drag down the audio levels here in the timeline and let's readjust the size of our effects on the right hand side there so we can see a bit more and i'm going to do shift and z again and basically i want to grab just the bit where they do this gun salute and fire the cannon so we'll just grab this section of it so I'm just pressing I here to mark a range of the end of that clip and then I can press the backspace or delete key to remove that and then I'm also going to use the range selection tool again here just to trim this down so they have fired their guns and I just want to catch exactly when they fire the cannon which is at the end here and if I do shift and Z again we can zoom back to fit and I'll play this through so we have the gun saluting and then the firing of the cannon. So the reason for doing this is just to show you that we can pull together a whole range of different clips into this particular single screen. So basically now I've got that all set up, I need to wrap this up into a compound clip. So I'm doing a little bit of my editing, but I don't need to do all my editing um, before I actually apply the screens effect. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and press G. Um, which is the same as going to file new and creating a compound clip so alt and g or option and g depending on what keyboard you're working on and we'll use this as a screen compound clip and click ok or hit enter and now once that's set up i can come across to my effect uh, if we go down, we've got the Cineflare Screens plugin already installed here. And basically all the plugins that I install are really easily managed through this FX Factory panel. Um, installing plugins in Final Cut Pro 10 uh, kind of manually is pretty easy as well. But it's also nice if you just need to get the work done to be able to install and then also uh, uninstall uh, different plugins that you're working with. And FX Factory makes that super easy. So I'm going to drag on the default computer screens effect here. And basically you'll see that my video footage has been put into a static screen. So this behaves like a normal effect be up in the top right in our inspector. And if you don't see your inspector, just go to window, show in workspace and check the inspector is visible. And then basically once this is up, um, we can do some real simple changes to get some nice effects here. So if I come back to the beginning of my clip here, just when the screen fades in, you can see I've got this orbit start option for my screen. So I can basically decide where I want my screen to start at the beginning of this clip. And then if I come to the end, just before that screen fades out, I've got the orbit end, so I can decide where I want my screen to end its orbit. So basically now if we come back to the beginning and play this through, we are gonna see our screen orbiting slowly as the video edit that we have um, inside that screen kind of rotates around uh, within it. Um, and this I think looks super cool. It adds kind of nice level um, to your video edits. And also if you're kind of presenting products or particularly kind of products that are appearing on screen like a website um, or you're trying to show clients and prototype of a new website, then this is a, a great way of uh, showing it in a presentation. So the other thing we can do as well um, to kind of change this white background is if we scroll down, and this is kind of one of my favorite parts of the Cineflare Screens plugin, is that if we go to the backgrounds that I have here, and then I'm just gonna select my clip again, scroll down, then I have a drop zone here, so I can change the type of background from solid color to either transparent, so it's just gonna show whatever is in the layers behind your video, or to interactive, 
And so now if I click on the image well, I can come and select an image or the image I already had selected will be selected and it will put that in the background. So we can get this nice kind of level of depth and a little bit of realism as we're presenting things on screen in the screens plugin. So I'm gonna hit apply clip here. And basically now you can see that as I play this through, I have that nice out of focus background in there. So you can see at the edges here, I've got this black bar. So we just need to kind of tweak things where we're starting. And if I scroll down, I can change a scale of my background. So it kind of fills that space a bit better. And I also need to check the end and make sure that I don't have a black bar coming across on the left. I can also modify my orbit start and my orbit end as well um, so that I can basically control that there too. So we have a lot of other cool effects in here too. Um, so we have kind of a zoom for our screens too. So we can zoom in and out. Um, so if I just add a little bit of zoom here and I want to make sure I'm looking at this at the end. Okay, so you can see I'm basically, as this is moving through, now zooming into that screen just a little bit. And depending on the speed of your animation, you'll kind of notice it or it can be quite subtle, um, like it is over the 20 seconds that we've got this playing back. I've also got some uh, crane options here as well. And really you wanna be at the start and end when you're working with these start and end options. So basically I can have a pan start um, which can be useful if you want to get text on a particular part of your screen. So it's going to pan from here and then across to the other side. It's zooming in and I could also get it to pan across there on the end. And that would make a little bit of space for some graphic text on my right hand side here or as I come to the end of my clip um, on the left hand side here as it kind of fades out. I also have some handy options um, here underneath this uh, background to screen option. Um, so at the beginning here, you can see my screen fades in very quickly at the beginning. And it may be that we wanna make some space uh, for some text in here. So if I play this through, okay, so around five seconds, I can now come to my screen offset start. If I drag this all the way up to the top, then you can see my screen is only fading in around that five second mark. So basically I have four seconds here where I can put some other overlays over the top of my video, text or whatever, and then I can have my screen fade in. So it's a kind of super handy uh, detail for that. And then the same at the end as well. So basically my screen is fading out right at the end, but if I wanna make some space for some text, at the end there, I can have the fade happen earlier on in this animation, we still get that nice animation of the office space in the background there. So if we're gonna overlay text, then we can also make some space for that at the end as well. I also have kind of nice controls for the blur of my background too. So if I scroll down here, you can see we've got kind of the ability to sharpen or blur out the background more, which we can see here a bit more clearly. So you can see now, because I have faded that out a little bit sooner, um, basically I'm losing the, the cannon fire um, there at the end, which is kind of one of the cool bits. So of course, because this is a compound clip, if I double click here, I could now, for instance, trim this down. So you can see where my playhead was and make sure that I get in uh, that last little bit there and I'll stretch this out so it fills up that space. We can always come and edit in later so you can see now I've trimmed that down so that we get the cannon fire just as things begin to fade out. So on lots of different levels we've got a nice set of tools to kind of really control what we're doing here. Also because it's a compound clip if I copy it and paste it and because screens is basically an effect if I come up to my second clip here just shift and z to zoom it to fit um, I can delete that effect and we'll just have a quick look at one of these tablet presets. So it's very similar kind of settings here, but with a tablet 
presets, we basically have this kind of preset animations. And you can see up here, we have these preset animations uh, set up and the same for this as for the computer screens. And you can see we get this nice kind of flying tablet, which we can modify, which we can edit. Um, and we can also do things like adding it in that background um, as well. So some super useful uh, kind of different tablet presets as well. And we also have a tablet, uh, a pad. We'll just come back to the middle here. A TV screen and a basic border. So if you don't actually want a kind of screen here, and then we have things like touch screens as well. So we have a lot of nice uh, kind of different options here for tablets, for screens, for computers, um, for basically showcasing um, our videos or our projects um, using the Cineflare Screens plugin. So I hope that's been a useful overview of the Cineflare Screens plugins. If you have any questions about it, then please do leave them in the comments below. Um, but otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.